that. Uh, a warm welcome to a new voice on my Sunday service right here on Talk TV. She is campaigner and director of Car 26, Lois Perry. Uh, hello, Lois. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Thanks very much for joining us. Tell us what Car 26 is first. Well, I set up Car 26 around COP26 last year, and it was a bit of a Mickey take out of the whole net zero madness that was going on at the time. And uh, Car 26 stands for Climate Analysis and Reason. And we did some polling at the time, actually, and it showed that 58% of those expressed an opinion. And this was back in October last year, so before the cost of living crisis had properly hit. 58% wanted to have a net zero referendum. I mean, I think that's going to be a lot higher now, 100% higher, definitely. Yeah, um, I want to get on to fracking uh, in just a little while because I know you're very knowledgeable about that and you've uh, cam <laughs> campaigned long and hard about it. But uh, what do you think about... Uh, you see, Liz... Rishi Sunak is saying, I'll continue with Boris's green levies, bearing in mind that 25% of our electricity bills are to fund Boris's carbon net zero ambitions, his green yeah. dream to get to carbon net zero by 2050, you know, to pay for windmills and solar panels. 8% uh, of our total energy bills go towards this green project. Now, I've got nothing against trying to save the planet and all that. Uh, mm. I'm slightly dubious about just how much humanity is responsible for our planetary problems. Well, well that's so, a so am I. That's and a so the point is, though, Lois, the point is, though, is this the time to be charging people so much money in green levies? Uh, I think they should be cancelled right now, don't you? No, absolutely. It's the most horrific time to be putting ideological uh, charges onto our bills, especially, you know, when there's a lot of debate around as you say, um, exactly how much difference it actually makes in terms of, um, you know, the, the damage to the planet or so-called damage to the planet. But Liz Truss, actually, to be fair to her, is saying that she will remove those green levies from her energy from our energy bills as, as soon as she gets in, which she will, hopefully. But no, Rishi is totally signed up to the whole green agenda. He said he's nine-year-old, he's directing yeah. his policy. I mean... Great, it's all <laughs> great, that's good to know, isn't it? That a nine-year-old, oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Well, so we've had Carrie... And now we've got a nine-year-old. It'd be it'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, if the actual prime minister was making the decisions? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm sick to death of uh, uh, Rishi Sunak going on about his children and his grandchildren uh, because I don't yeah. want I don't, uh, nothing against them, and I wish them happy and fulfilled lives. Uh, but I'm a bit more worried about me right now. What's he going to do Absolutely. for us right now? And it doesn't yeah. seem like it's very much at all. But one thing that could save us all a lot of money uh, yeah. on our energy bills uh, would be a return to fracking after the insanity, the kind of virtue signalling insanity of a decision by this government three years ago to uh, ban fracking because uh, the green protesters up in Lancashire said it would cause earthquakes in Blackpool. It would not have done that. It no, will not do that. Madness. We need to get yeah. back to fracking, don't we? We do, and it's very interesting, actually. I mean, it's come out in um, in lots of mainstream newspapers, so not conspiracy sites or whatever, that actually that the Russians were actually funding the anti-fracking campaign, which is why it was so well organised and, you know, they had so much cash. And actually, it wasn't the local people in Lancashire. The people were shipped in from London, and it was highly well organised. They were A lot of the protesters, or so-called protesters, were on salaries of up to 40 grand a year. You know, the, the whole thing is completely disingenuous to say that it was sort of local people. That's what they wanted us to think. But, no, we need to be fracking. As you say, we should have been doing it before. Um, in, in America, they've been fracking for ages now, and they pay an eighth of what we pay for their electricity. Uh, we, could, we, we should be starting straight away. Um, but the British Geological Survey has actually put the report into government and they're sitting on it at the moment. But my understanding, and I, I can't go into how I know, but my understanding is that it is, it's not negative about the about fracking this is the report that's commissioned by the government and um, by um, by the energy secretary so hopefully 
Yeah. Um, we should be fracking again very, very soon. And um, this trust is committed to fracking again. Mm. Obviously, Rishi Sunak has as well, but I'm not sure how genuine that is based on what you just said before about his net zero ideology. So, yeah, yeah let's let's frack. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that in America, uh, they dug themselves up, they drilled for shale gas uh, and found themselves more than a century's worth of cheap energy. So they have very low energy bills uh, and yeah. they've got so much, they're swimming in it, they're selling it around the world. We apparently have similar amounts lying under the soil here in Britain, uh, but we yeah. banned it because uh, the Green Lobby said, oh, don't do it. Uh, well, we need to start telling the Green lobby there are more pressing issues than their dreams about carbon net zero in 2050 uh, people are going to go under because of these uh, rising fuel prices these rising they are, energy people are already bills. going under yeah. we need to get cracking with fracking we shouldn't be thinking about whether we can heat or eat we should be thinking whether we can choose between form and smoked salmon or caviar you yeah. know it doesn't have to be on the bread line like this we have got treasure under our feet and we've got 100 years the actual amount of gas that's under our feet is the equivalent in terms of its value of wiping off our entire national debt i mean it's extraordinary and apparently it's very very high quality shale gas that we have as well yeah, I mean, it is mad. I mean, the, the point is our green policies over the past 10 years have been a load of virtue signalling rubbish, sending, selling us a lie. Boris going round saying, oh, uh, you know, we can be completely powered by windmills and solar panels. Uh, it's nonsense. He knows it's a nonsense as yeah. well. Yeah, ne it. Neglecting to mention, Lois, uh, not when it's not windy or when the sun isn't <laughs> shining. And by the way, the sun doesn't shine very much here in Britain. They've been selling us a lie. Simple as that. They've been selling us a pup and we have been, um, you know, we've been bringing in wood pellets from America to burn at Drax Power Plant yeah. because apparently it's less carbon intensive to, to burn wood pellets than it is to take coal out of the ground or gas out of the ground, which is actually just older wood pellets, you know, quite a lot older, but the whole thing is a nonsense. We're completely reliant on other countries. And look at Germany. They're I know, I was going to bring that up. I mean, if we want to see uh, where we could be headed, if we carry on with this m green madness, have a look at Germany, which is now a basket case because Angela Merkel, who I keep being told was a colossus of European politics, uh, embarked on the craziest green policy adventure you've ever seen. And now her country is addicted to Russian oil, can't help yep. Ukraine. Uh, they're turning down the street lights. They're closing public swimming pools. They're telling people to take shorter showers. That's where we're heading if we don't stop this green madness. Lois, stay where you are. We'll resume this okay. conversation after these messages. I'm with Lois Perry. Perry, she's a campaigner and director of Car 26. I'm. <laughs> Oh, while well, I remember, I'm standing in for Mike Graham this week uh, from 10am uh, till 1pm every day, the mid-morning spectacular. So uh, I'll be holding the keys of the Independent Republic. Uh, so do tune in tomorrow. Uh, Mike's away in Italy, still sunning himself. Uh, seems to have been there forever. No, he's been there for one week. He's got one more week. So don't forget, tune in to me tomorrow morning. Uh, now, uh, I'm still with uh, Lois Perry, campaigner and director of the Car 26 organisation. Uh, welcome back, Lois. I want to uh, move on from uh, politics, uh, this is a familiar kind of a story. Uh, Frankie Boyle, the comedian, has mm. been slammed for making a joke about raping and killing the TV star Holly Willoughby. I stress it was a joke. Now, yeah. that doesn't strike me as a very nice thing to say, and it doesn't strike me necessarily as particularly funny, uh, but of course comedy is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, and, uh, you know, I accept when people say that's really offensive. Uh, the problem is here for me, uh, being offensive is not illegal and I'm afraid no. it seems to me this is an issue of freedom of speech. It might not be yeah. not very nice what Frankie Boyle said but surely he has the right to say it. No, absolutely and it's a good barometer of uh, democracy and the freedoms that we have in the country whether we're allowed 
to do comedy, you know, that's offensive. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily make jokes about raping and murdering um, Hartley Willoughby. Willoughby, not Willoughby, be sorry, Willoughby. Um, that's what she but, calls you know. herself. That's what uh, Keith, Keith Lemon used <laughs> sorry, to call I her that. Stop. Yeah, she does <laughs> yeah. call herself. Holly that. Willoughby, that was Keith yeah, Lemon. Yeah, Willoughby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I love Holly, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I wouldn't make a joke about that. But, you know, I defend his right to make jokes about things like that. It's, um, it's very important that we can make jokes about almost anything actually mm. yeah. you know it it, we, it challenges the status quo it's interesting because i watch one of my favorite things is the league of gentlemen with big big comedy series um bbc2 they brought it back recently for one series i went and saw the show at the o2 actually but it was about 20 years old and when they run these particular episodes now on Brickbox, it says at the beginning this comedy reflects the attitudes of the time and i remember thinking no, it didn't. It was outrageous and offensive 20 years ago. And it, it was it was dark and wrong then. That's why it was so brilliant. But I was just thinking, kids watching it must have thought, wow, is that the, were they the attitudes of the time? But of course they weren't. It it it, it challenged the orthodoxy. It was dark, it was wrong. And that's why it was funny. You know, it's so important. Yeah, Frankie Boyle uh, made these jokes at the Latitude uh, Festival. And, of course, it follows on from a similar controversy uh, surrounding uh, Jimmy Carr, who made jokes about the Holocaust not so long ago. Uh, again, you know, uh, my feeling is comedians should take it upon themselves to not go there. But if they want to go there, then uh, I would uh, defend their right to do so. Yeah, I mean, again, that's not something that I would make a joke about, but comedy is about challenging things. It's, and also it's about getting a laugh by doing something that's so wrong as well that everyone goes, <gasps> yeah, and, there is you know, that, yeah. and they say, Deliberate oh, I don't know whether we should yeah. laugh or not. Yeah. You know, especially his kind of comedy, Jimmy Carr. I mean, you know, that yeah. that's his stock in trade, isn't it? Yeah. So, no, it, it, yeah, John Cleese said that, Comedy is dying at the altar of political correctness, and it really is. I mean, when was the last time we saw something funny on the BBC? I mean, uh, probably... I think, I think, I think, I think it's when John yeah. Cleese was in the Faulty Towers, you know, about 50 <laughs> yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah. No, the, the BBC doesn't really do comedy anymore. It does uh, uh, shock and puritanism and uh, you can't do this and you can't do that. But I'm, fr I'm afraid if you have... <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, if you have freedom <laughs> of speech, you have to accept... Uh, that uh, that includes the freedom to say things that many people might find offensive. To be offensive is not to break the law. So uh, I think we uh, ought to uh, bow out and let these people make these jokes if they want to. And if it destroys their career, that's their fault. Uh, so but, be it. but it's uh, mm. that's uh, that's up to them. Now uh, let's move on to uh, what did you think about the closing of the Tavistock Clinic, the trans kids clinic, the NHS mm. trans kids limit which i which i well, the th most shocking thing i find about that is i think it's still going to be open for about another uh year or so and the uh a review of this place uh, by i think her name is hillary cass i think she said in this review only last week she said this place is not safe for children and yet no. it will still be in operation for another year uh, and it's an NHS uh, outfit. And uh, today uh, a girl called Kira Bell, uh, mm. who was given drugs age 16 by clinic doctors at the Tavistock, uh, she, tells, she tells her story uh, saying, uh, you know, basically uh, that uh, what they did to her was horrific. Uh, that she immediately realised she'd made a terrible mistake and oh, uh, she hopes that the closure of the Tavistock Clinic will mean an end to the medicalisation of children. She's talking about those uh, puberty-blocking drugs that they give to kids, uh, you know, in, the t in their teen years. Permanent damage. They cause permanent damage yeah, yeah. to the individuals that take them. Yeah, mm. uh, so this place extraordinary that was a, a, an NHS establishment uh, extraordinary that it went on for 15 years we mm. need a I mean I don't hate calling for public inquiries I think we have too many but we really do need to have a public inquiry into how it came about that grown adults medically qualified adults gave drugs to kids 
that basically ruined their lives. And we're talking to kids aged four, five and six and saying, yeah, you're in the wrong body. I mean, it's what bizarre. the hell was going on, Lois? It's, it's absolutely disgusting. And it's one of those things where, again, an ideology takes over. And if you question it, then there's almost a, a religious fervor around it that you can't question it because you're a bigot or you're a denier or whatever it is they want to throw at you. You're a racist, you're a transphobe. You know, all those things can be thrown into the mix. But the fact that kids, little kids, have been given, as you say, medication that will permanently damage them, that could affect their ability to have children, all, all sorts of things, is absolutely disgusting. And why is it still open for another year? If it was a children's home, wouldn't it be shut immediately, Kevin? I'm sure it would, wouldn't well, it? Yeah, especially since the, the review that essentially brought about its closure by this lady, mm. Hillary Cass, a very uh, deep uh, uh, probe into what had been going on there, concluded the Tavistock Clinic is not safe for children. So what will yeah. it be doing for the next year or so? Yeah, and I'm concerned as well that it doesn't just shape shift into something else because uh, Kira Bell, in the article that I read, said that she's concerned that they're, they're talking about, you know, having a more holistic approach towards children and gender and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe they will shape shift and just start doing it again somewhere else and with a different name. I think you're right. I think public inquiries, they are overused. But on this particular one, I'm with you 100%. 100% there should be a public inquiry. I had uh, the trans, uh, a journalist, trans uh, woman, uh, Debbie Hayton, on my show the other day. Uh, and she said, I said, well, look, you know, because I th I, let's not get overdo this you know there are kids you know who really do feel they're in the wrong body and they probably are the kind of people that at some point in their life you know should will want to transition and if that makes them happy i'm all for it i'm it's all for small it amount, but, I think. but what she said what she said was for god's sake wait until they're grown up don't start yes. telling them when they're exactly. four years old. Don't start yes. giving them drugs when they're 14 and 15 and 16. Uh, that's what she said. Wait until you're an adult and so you know your own mind uh, and don't get influenced by uh, adults at the Tavistock Clinic. That's what she said. Seems to me to make sense. Yeah, totally. It uh, makes total sense. I mean, believe it or not, I was a bit of a tomboy when I was little. You know, that didn't work out that well for me. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really a tomboy anymore. You're but, a failed tomboy. That's what you I'm are. A, I'm a failed tomboy. But my, my son um, went to school and with what there was a little boy. Well, he thought she was a little boy, but actually she wasn't. She was a little girl and she she wore boys clothes, she did little boys sports, had a boy's haircut. My son had no idea it was a, um, a little girl till much later. But she's a proper girly girl now. She's 19 and if you have a look at her Facebook, she's got like massive hair, little outfits, yeah. great big muscly boyfriends. You know, she, she would definitely have been somebody that would have been told, oh, you know, you're in the wrong body and all of that. 100%. Yeah. So uh, we got, you, wait we got, till you're older. Wait till they're eighteen or twenty, even. Yeah. And then they then make it. Then they make up their. Then then as adults, they make up yes. their own minds. Yes. Uh, the idea that they're talking to kids of four years old is just mind-boggling to me. It's actually child abuse. I think. Uh, well, I th it's, arguably it is. Yes. Uh, mm. uh, but as I say, I do think there will be a public inquiry, and uh, I for so. once, I agree with it. I usually think public inquiries are a way of uh, kicking serious issues into the long grass so politicians can get out of trouble in the short term but mm. in the case of the Tavistock Clinic we need to I think it has been a catastrophic massive 15 year national mistake uh, the NHS's scar and uh, we need to find out what went wrong uh, I've only got about a minute left uh, Lois okay. uh, let's go back to the uh, leadership race who do you want okay. to win? who do you want to win I like Liz Truss. I think she's great. Uh, she's um, she's she's pro fracking. Um, she is a, a low a low tax politician. She's pro business. Um, she's great. And actually, to go back to the gender stuff, she's been the one that's been coming out saying that she's going to make it illegal for the medicalisation of children with regards to gender. 
And also she said, I know what a woman is. She seems to be sounding like the most normal person. Yeah, let's, so let, let's not forget, Lois, that uh, when uh, Rishi Sunak came on to talk TV not so long ago and was asked mm. by Julia Hartley Brewer, the breakfast host, uh, could you define a woman? Uh, mm. he, he didn't and couldn't. Right. And he, well, he, he basically it, said, that's oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. why these politicians can't define a woman? Uh, He's it, a woke. It, it is by Rishi the way. is a woke. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite simple. It's a uh, adult female human. It's not that difficult. Uh, Lois, uh, that was excellent. That was excellent talking to you. And please come on and uh, talk okay, to us thank again. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Lois Perry, campaigner and director of CAR26, the uh, climate change organisation. Uh, they're sceptical of about climate change, that's their point. Uh, they're not saying the climate's not changing, but they're sceptical just how much uh, it's due to greenhouse gases and the human content. So uh, much still to come. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan.